Welcome, the NU. Thanks. Kitos. Dear Mrs. Koivisto, uh, dear Minister, dear Eva, dear friends, Huva Paiva, good afternoon. Thank you very much for giving me the honor to speak in front of you today uh, on this uh, International Day of Women's Rights. I first uh, would like to have a thought for all these women that have fought and that are still fighting for, human, uh, for women's rights uh, around the world. Um, I have been asked to talk to you today so about how Me Too and uh, how sexual harassment um, is, uh, has been uh, taken care of during the last uh, years uh, in France and what are the concrete steps taken by the French government lately. And I cannot talk to you uh, about that without talking about the impact of the year 2017, but on two sides. Of course, in 2017, we had the Weinstein case leading to the E2 hashtag with this um, massive denunciation of sexual harassment, including at work, using social media, so giving it this mass conscience of uh, what was happening and uh, what women were victim of. It was also a way for women to speak uh, in an easier way because it is complicated to, to talk about sexual harassment. But it also had some coincides in, in the way that it did not really give a global overview of uh, this problem. It also led, especially in France, using some hashtags with personal de de uh, denunciation, which means not going to court, but using so, uh, social media as justice, which in a way is also problematic to respect the rights, of course, of the victim, but also of the defender. So that's the year on one side. On the other side, in 2017, we had the election of President Macron in May, and he nominated Marlene Chiappa, uh, who is a young woman, a feminist, a writer, who used to be very, uh, who is very active on the internet as um, uh, responsible of gender equality issues uh, in the government. And in November 2017, President Macron des, uh, decided to make um, gender equality as the great cause of the continuum, which means that, of course, it is one of the top priority of the government. This is what I'm going to talk to you right now on the, uh, of course, on the point of view of sexual harassment at work, on what was, what information we got since then, and what the concrete steps that were taken. First, I want to talk to you about surveys and information, because information is a key to know what kind of action you need to take. You need to know what are the victims, who are the harasser, to know what to do. I wanted to talk to you about two surveys. One in 2014. This shows that 20% of women were confronted to sexual harassment at work. 30% did not talk about it. And only 5% of the cases were brought before courts. And this says a lot. In 2018, there was another survey that was made, and this survey showed that 32% of women uh, were confronted to sexual harassment in the legal sense, I mean, according to the French law, of course, but only 22% of them knew that it was sexual harassment. And this is very important also as what information and when we need to tell women and to explain to women also what sexual harassment means. Um, this survey also showed of course, what concretely was the sexual harassment. So we talk about verbal or visual sexual harassment. We talk about uh, repeated uh, remarks on your body or clothing, being touched without your consent, or also psychological pressure in exchange for a promotion or contract. The survey also wanted to show um, the different groups that were concerned. And in my part, uh, I actually was uh, surprised to learn some, some things that I thought were true, but actually did not, seem, did not come out from the survey, that there was no real difference between age group or level of education. It was all between 30 and 36 percent. But the higher position the women were, and then you had a real impact, going up to 49 percent of women that were owner, owner of their company. Most of their sexual harassment was most common in urban areas, 
and 60% of the sexually harassed women were homosexual or bisexual in this survey. It also gave, I think, a very interesting information on the harasser because 54% of the harasser came outside of the company, 46% was a colleague and only 22% were managers that we at least tend to think more about we're being responsible of the sexual um, harassment except uh, for uh, on the sexual pressure uh, to get something when then the managers were the, the, the most common harasser. So with these figures in mind, the government uh, took concrete actions to fight against sexual harassment at work. And I'm firstly going to talk about the, first, the fifth road, uh, roadmap against all violences on women, and the all was added uh, on this fifth roadmap. It was adopted in 2017. It represents 125 million euros to implement uh, these actions. Already, we, had, we're not, we did not start from scratch, and with the fourth roadmap, there was things that were already in place, and I just wanted to uh, maybe talk to you about one phone number, the 3939. It gets more than 50,000 phone calls on all violences, including, uh, including harassment. Emergency telephones and shelters, um, training of professionals. There's been more than 300,000 professionals trained to, uh, take, to take into consideration uh, women violence and harassment. And for the fifth world map, there were three objectives that were um, adopted to ensure the rights of the victims. For example, now you can have online claims for harassment, uh, so 24-7, and you can also have uh, deposit your claim in hospital. That means that a victim doesn't have, doesn't have to go to the police, but there are just people specifically trained there to uh, get the claims, which is very important in the, when, for, for the victims. Um, there's also the second objective to reinforce public actions, especially towards um, specific victims like children and most exposed women. And the third objective is a focus on sexism and sexual violence. On this um, objective three, there are four things that are really uh, that do matter for today's subject. The sensibilization of the younger generation at school and university. Since 2018, at school, there's a specific teaching that all children um, are, are learning at school on what is um, sexual harassment, maybe not at work at that age, but just to be trained to know what it is and how to react uh, in front of it. It's also at the university, and then at a, of course at a higher level, and people have been trained to discuss with children and young adults to just um, tell the, explain to uh, them this, uh, this problematic. Then there's been also measures to prevent sexism and sexual harassment in all places, including uh, work. For example, in companies uh, over a certain number of uh, employees, there has to be a specific counselor uh, for sexual harassment in the human resources. There's been a specific training for managers to just see what is sexual harassment and to know what to do with the different colleagues and how to react, um, including in the public sector. There's been um, the fight against sexual harassment is now a priority and a real focus for all the inspectors who are going to the workplace to see if all the legal obligations are respected at the workplace. And there's been links made with the National Defender for Rights, which has already very interesting procedures for victims to follow. I also wanted to talk to you about other concrete examples. The legislation has been adapted, for example, in 2018, there's been um, including online harassment as aggravating circumstances for sexual harassment, developing new online resources with two specific websites, and I wanted to show you this one and the, the blue circle that is on this um, web page to show that there's also an easy quit. So if you're just looking at this website, you can just click there and then you're just erasing all traces that you've been on this website and it's closing the Im image. And in May 2018, there's a new action plan that was taken with 15 uh, um, measures, 10 to end wage uh, inequalities and 5 to fight against sexist and sexual violences at work, leading to new um, legislation that will be uh, adopted in our legal system. 
So as a conclusion, I wanted to uh, say how, that, of course, gender equality is on the top priority of the French government, including also on in the international level with a new strategy adopted in 2018. A few days ago, France has been given the mark of 100 out of 100 in the World Bank survey uh, Women, Business and Law. It was a survey on eight criteria, and France got this higher, uh, this higher mark thanks to the recent reforms in the wage uh, equality, due to the strong will of uh, the government to make uh, changes on um, equality and to the adapting legal disposition of uh, our system. However, there's of course, however, there's still a lot to do uh, to implement all these measures and for all women to be able to talk about it and to uh, be able not to be afraid and for uh, sexual harassment at work to stop. Thank you very much. Huva Neisten Paiva. Merci.